Chair. Good afternoon. I'm here to provide the public with an update of the currently available information regarding yesterday's tragic shooting. Homicide detectives have been working around the clock to gather information and evidence. There's still a great deal of work to do before the investigation is completed. This briefing is a only a recitation of verified information. I want to begin by honoring the three precious lives that were lost yesterday. Angela Michelle Carr, 52 years old. Anolt Joseph, or AJ uh, McGarry Jr., 19 years old. And Gerald Deshaun Galligan, 29 years old. Yesterday, homicide detectives completed their next of kin notifications of victims' family members. We continue to pray for the loved ones and of those of those who were lost through this maniac's acts of census violence. The Office of the Medical Examiner has positively identified the shooter as Ryan Christopher Tallman. The shooter was 21 years of age when he committed yesterday's atrocities. He lived with his parents in Orange Park in Clay County, Florida. To our knowledge, he had no criminal arrest history. And as I said yesterday, he did have a Baker Act petition from 2017. This petition occurred in Clay County and it appears that the shooter was held for 72 hours under the Baker Act provision and then released without further involuntary commitment. Homicide detectives have been able to establish a timeline of events up to and including the shooter. On 7-6 of 2017, he was Baker Act in Clay County. On 4-6 of 2023, the FFL transfer to Orange Park gun and pawn of a Glock 20 Generation 4, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. On 6-22 of 2023, the FFL transferred to Wild West Guns and Gold Palmetto State Army PA-15 5.56 millimeter AR-15 type rifle. On 8-26 of 2023, at 12.48 uh, in the afternoon, the suspect arrived at DWU behind the library in a gay, uh, gray Honda Element, and he donned his bulletproof vest. During this time, a TikTok video of the suspect getting dressed at EWU with no timestamp on that on that TikTok video. At 12:55 and 10 seconds, EWU security backs into a parking spot in the same parking lot as the suspect. At 12:57 and 49 seconds, the suspect leaves EWU south on Pierce Street, then west on Kings Road. At 12:58 and 17 seconds, EWU security follows our suspect out of the parking lot. Between EWU security leaving the parking lot and shot spotters, 911 call at Dollar General at 13 or at 10804, EWU flags down DSO officer and says there's a suspicious person on campus. A white male, heavy set, wearing a gray tank top, black shorts, bulletproof vest, and blue latex gloves in a tan Kia. That was the description they, that they thought they thought he was in a Kia. The officer states he's researching the vehicle and the subject to see if there was any calls for service active or pending, and in the process of writing a be on the lookout for a photo when the suspect goes, uh, when, when the shooting goes out. At 108, an 11 round shot spotter activated. At 108 and 13 seconds, the suspect's on video in the parking lot in front of the store, shooting into a black Kia and murders the first victim, it's Angela Carr. The suspect enters the Dollar General store and engages the second victim. So a young 19-year-old young victim, Anolt McGarry. At 108 20 and 24 seconds, multiple witnesses exit the rear, uh, the rear door of the store. At 108 and 47 seconds, the suspect exits the same, door, the same rear door. At 109 and 6 seconds, one round shot spotter goes off. At 109 and 13 seconds, the suspect enters the same rear door. At 109 and 30 seconds, the suspect shoots at a security camera several times but misses. At 109 and 50 seconds, the first 911 call goes out. At 110 and 30 seconds, victim Jared Gallion enters the store with his girlfriend. At 113 and 5 seconds, one round shot spotter initiates once again. At 113 and 10 seconds, the suspect shoots a third victim, Gerald Gallion. At 113 and 12 seconds, the suspect chases witness Elvisha Chapel through the store, shooting her, but does not strike her. At 113 and 25 seconds, Elvisha Campbell 
exits, exit, exits the rear door, uh, the rear east door of the store. And the 113 and 37 second, seconds, the suspect shoots out the rear door on the, on the east side of the building. At 113 and 43 seconds, a four round shots fired initiates. At 113 and 47 seconds, the suspect re enters the building and walks back towards the office. At 114 and 23 seconds, the suspect enters the office. At 118, the suspect texts his father and says, use a screwdriver to get into my room. The father enters the room and finds a last will and testament of the suspect along with a suicide note on his laptop. At 119 and 21 seconds, the officers enter the building and begin to clear. Just 11 minutes after this whole ordeal began. Patrol clearing the hallway when the officer hears a single gunshot. We believe that's when he killed himself. At 141 and three seconds, EWU uh, U security Marcus Williams calls to notify JSO. At 345, 344, and 24 seconds, SWAT, our SWAT officers confirm the suspect's down. Homicide detectives have gathered surveillance footage, uh, video footage from the Dollar General, which captured the shooter's rampage. I will share portions of that video right now. Again, out of respect for the victim's families, we are going to cut this video short. We would not be showing their loved ones and what happened to them inside the store. Rather, these video surveillance excerpts, ex excerpts detail some of the shooter's movements outside and inside the Dollar General. As you'll see from the video footage, the shooter outfitted himself with a tactical vest, which he covered with a short sleeve button up shirt. He created a facial covering and donned gloves for his attack. This investigation is ongoing, and I will provide you with additional information as is established and verified. I want to thank our law enforcement partners for their continued, continued support in this investigation. As our community collectively grieves this tragedy, this agency will continue to diligently investigate so that we can provide victims, families, and our community with as many answers as we can. Our community is grappling to understand why this atrocity occurred. I urge all, us all not to look for sense and senseless act of violence. There's no reason or explanation that we'll ever account for the shooter's decisions and actions. His sickening ideology is not representative of the values of this Jacksonville community that we all love so much. We are not a community of hate. We stand united with the good and decent people of this city. We reject this inexcusable violence. And this agency will not rest until this investigation is complete and every available avenue of accountability has been exhausted. And I'll be happy to answer any questions after we do this video. Again, the video is rather short because um, I don't think some of the things that are on there are appropriate for television. It's not meant to entertain or be insensitive to our, to our victims and our victims' families. So I want our I want the people to be able to see exactly what happened in this situation and um, just how sick it is. I'll answer any questions. If I